Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And while there have been some rumors around as to why I haven't been um, making YouTube videos on the black market or why I haven't been making vi YouTube videos on the 1.8 server, why I haven't been streaming in the last week, some people have been saying, oh my word, QB, has he got coronavirus? No, luckily not. I'm fine. I was actually in France. I was skiing. I took a week off even though I pre-loaded some YouTube videos to release while I was there. And I have to admit, a massive thank you to you all for your amazing support of those YouTube videos and your incredible feedback, especially on the uh, the YouTube highlights video that was edited by Phil. Um, yeah, just what can I say? It is amazing feedback. Obviously, we've got to try and get on to more of that. But for that to happen, I have to be streaming, right? To be able to get some of those highlights. And so I'm looking forward to getting back at it to, tonight. Although I was in France skiing for a week and oh my word, I feel, I feel all energized. I feel like I'm, I'm more healthy than I have been in a while. There's nothing quite like a little bit of mountain air and, and snow and very cold conditions and testing yourself, making sure you don't break your legs. Although I don't really need them. All I really need is my hands and my voice and I'm pretty much okay, right? Hashtag gamer life. Anyway, I digress. Let me focus on what's at hand. And that is today, one of the best things about coming back from holiday is checking out all of the awesome replays that all of you, the awesome World of Tanks community, have been able to rack up over the last week. And I have to admit, I think this is one of, if not the better ones. Definitely. Attics 28 in the good old Tier 8 American non-turreted tank destroyer. It is the T-28. This vehicle, I think it was the second tank I actually featured ever on my YouTube channel. I managed to, I think I get a Pulls Medal, although back then it wasn't called a Pulls Medal. It was called a Whitman's Medal, but when they found out Whitman was part of the SS, they changed it to a Bolter's Medal for seven kills, and then I think that they just decided to call it a Radley Walters Medal instead and bump up the kills to eight. So today, Attics in the T-28 is going to have an astonishing round where everything is going to be coming at him. You, you just have to wait and see. It's the good old T-28. This vehicle used to be uh, a little bit special at least at holding the line at tier 8. However, then Wargaming put this tank in the game. I think it's a very fitting moment that Attics is about to start shooting at the TS-5, which is pretty much just a better T-28 in every single way apart from the accuracy that the tank has. This vehicle actually has 0.38 accuracy, which is fairly okay at long range, while the TS-5 actually has 0.44, which makes it an incredibly poor sniper. I, you really have to start to scrape the barrel to find things to like about this tank rather than want to play the TS-5, to be honest. One of them might be the APCR rounds on this vehicle. You do have to sacrifice some of the heat ammunition you get on the TS-5, but at least you do get some better shell velocity along with it. But, to all intents and purposes, the TS-5 is, is the better tank, uh, apart from at long range when it comes down to the accuracy. And it's always sad when a premium tank always makes a, a tier 8 regular vehicle redundant. I feel like this should have been the one that had the better armor or the better DPM. Uh, that's simply not the case. Alright, so Attics is now in the position that you want to be on the high ground, above your opponents. You want to be Obi-Wan, you don't want to be Anakin, right? So he's locking down them as they're trying to progress towards his base. Having dealt with all the opponents below him apart from the two Super Hellcats, now he's turning his attention to a TS-5 who's made it above him. The one that I believe that he set on 5 earlier, yes, as that is the only TS-5 on the enemy team. And Attics punishes a poor move by the AMD 178B as he comes around the corner and takes a 120mm shell. Now Attics notices that he's getting jammed in the side by the Super Hellcat, and I wonder if he went alongside the T-44 there to avoid damage from the Super Hellcat. Maybe he's using the wreck of his fallen ally to avoid damage from the enemy team. Oh, poor shot there against the T-29, a bit of an unfortunate ricochet. Could that be the end for Attics? Up to 4,400 damage and a top gun now. Nah. Now, why, why would that have made it onto YouTube if that was going to be the case? Of course it's not going to be the case. Attic survives. The only on his team, played by Maxiel, manages to destroy the AMD who was flanking Attics. And that allows Attics to deal with the T29 and then lock the IKV in place. The TS5 comes around the corner to kill the Oni, his little buddy. But that allows Attics to be able to get a clean shot into the lower plate of the TS5. And the TS5 actually launched his vehicle up there, making the lower plate even worse, allowing Attics to finish him off. So the AMX-13 F3 hits him for 101 damage that 
tier 6 French self-propelled gun from base, and so now he's, he really can't hang around here too long. And Attix is using a manual fire extinguisher, otherwise if he was using a premium consumable, uh, I'm not talking about a premium fire extinguisher, uh, say like Cola, or maybe he'd just taken two repair kits and dropped the fire extinguisher altogether, then he'd probably want to repair his fuel tanks as quickly as he can. This was actually the vehicle that I set on fire using, I believe, my Cromwell Berlin to complete the incinerator mission when it was the hardest thing to do in the game. I know that the fuel tanks at the back are very combustible, as most fuel tanks are, but this one seems to be exceptionally so. So, Attics, don't let that super Hellcat get behind you, bud. He's turning his tank as quickly as he can. This is where crew skills like clutch braking can come into massive effect. The super Hellcat bumps into the Oni. That Oni is doing some stellar work, even in death he's still helping out the team, and the Super Hellcat doesn't have the best traverse in the world. Unable to track Attix's T28, he finishes him off, picking up his 10th kill and completing TD Mission 15 Triumph for the T T55A. Congratulations to you, that must be a feels-good moment as well. All that's needed to do now is to win the battle to be able to complete this with honours. So Attix loses his final remaining teammate, and with three enemy tanks approaching the cap circle, he needs to deal with the Super Hellcat and then hopefully take the fight to the T-3485M. The Super Hellcat gets spotted out in the open, panics, drives forwards to try and get into cover, and Attic shuts him down and follows it up with shutting down the T-3485M, and immediately he swings into play. He wants to get off the hill, he wants to get away from the self-propelled gun that's railing down from the enemy base. And he realizes, I'm not in the fastest tank, I'm in a tank that's limited at 22 kilometers an hour. I have to get forwards as quickly as I can. No time to dilly-dally, the enemy are putting pressure on my cap. And if for some reason the AMX had made it in there, that would have put even more pressure. So, a premium round there goes through the upper plate of the 45 TP. I didn't think that round would have gone in. And the 45 TP looks a little confused as to how that one also hit his tank as Attix manages to hit him from the bushes. So now on 12 kills, 7,558 damage. This is more than anyone could ask of any tier 8 tank, let alone one that isn't even a premium or a meta vehicle in the game right now. Attix is going to try and flank the 45 TP, although you're not really going to flank anything very quickly in a T28. But the AMX 13 F3 manages to get up behind him, and the 45 TP spots him out, bounces off the front of his armor. A premium round, to be exact, and Attix manages to finish off the 45 TP, and now with a shell to pick up the 14th kill, the Resonai Heroes medal! What a disaster! He just tracks the AMX, and the AMX repairs it quickly and scuttles away. Oh dear. Yeah, boys and girls. How are you going to catch a very fast French tank destroyer in a situation like this? Did you all think that was going to be the one that nobody gets, the Resinai Heroes medal? Wasn't quite to be. Attix is going to have to hunt down that tier 6 French self-propelled gun if he wants to claim the rarest of all medals in World of Tanks for securing 14 kills in a single round. All right, so T28, slow vehicle, AMX, ra a rather rapid self-propelled gun here. What would I be doing in this situation? Well, immediately, it's you've got to get to the enemy base. But do you know what the real problem is if you do decide to manage to make your way towards the enemy, enemy base? And that is that if you go there, then he could just sneak in. And if he gets into the cap circle before you, 10 seconds before you to be exact, then you're not going to be able to draw the game. But I don't think Attix wants to draw here, especially how he's trying to go for TD Mission 15 Triumph for a rather challenging T55A. Alright, Attix, where is this AMX 13 F3 going to be? You've got to either commit, you've either got to get towards the enemy cap circle, or you've got to defend your own. And I think with six minutes left on the game, he probably, now he makes it past the halfway point of the map, has committed towards making it towards the enemy base. I wonder how what Attix wants here. Does he want to complete TD-15 with honors by just capping out and securing it? He doesn't actually need to kill the AMX for that. But with his sixth sense going off, the AMX has been spotted. But the AMX actually pulls back behind the bush without firing a shot as the AMX himself also gets spotted. Or does Attix want to try and secure that 14th kill? All right, the AMX looking like he was coming around the corner. Is Attix going to blind fire around the bush? A tiny shot onto the lower plate, which he secures 14 kills. Ladies and gents, 
What a round of World of Tanks, and it was a pleasure to come home to this. I was rooting for you Attics all the way to secure that final kill, if only just to be able to complete TD Mission 15. I know how hard some of those final missions are to do with honours to save yourself those precious extra commendations. And with it also, Attics picks up a plethora of hero medals, a Pascucci's medal for taking out two self-propelled guns, a Rezena Heroes medal for securing 14 kills single-handedly. This is the medal that nobody gets. I've never been able to get more than 12 kills personally, although it was in an E75 at tier 9. A defender medal for picking up uh, 95 base defense points. A steel wall medal for blocking 2,190 damage, receiving 17 hits this round. And a high caliber medal for 8,094 damage, 10 times what anyone else on his team was able to achieve. Attics literally was the team, as you would expect with seeing scores like this, that 8,000 damage, those 14 kills, 2,340 base experience. I think half of that would have been enough, or even less than half of that, to be able to get an ace in this tank. It was a tremendous achievement, and Attics didn't even fire that many premium rounds, and he would have made a profit with or without a premium account. The perfect round of World of Tanks, not a premium tank, Profit made, even without a premium account. A plethora of hero medals and even the joyous kill on the TS-5, the vehicle that kind of makes this tank redundant. At least if we're looking at it from a competitive sense. But this replay, more than any, proves it's not just the vehicle, right? It's all down to the player. And Attics, congratulations to you on this mammoth carry. It was a pleasure to watch. And thank you so much for uploading it onto the What Replays website for the community to enjoy. I know I thoroughly did. If you did as well, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. But if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Sunday, it's time to get back into action on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby with my first tech tree showcase in what feels like forever. And this week, most of you have voted for the tier 10 American heavy tank, the non-auto loading one, the T110E5. And so come along, I'm gonna see if the line is still relevant in the game today. Is the T110E5 still worth picking up? Well, I'm gonna try and answer the question. As I start at tier one, work my way up to tier 10, and so you can see if the line's worth playing. Or alternatively, if you already have the tanks, maybe pick up a few tri tips and tricks along the way. I think I forgot to speak over the last week. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing all of you right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.